introduce myself. I'm okay. Mao Molona. I'm an anthropologist and an economist. Um, I started as an economist and I ended up being an anthropologist. I'm very interested in looking at the relationship between industrialization and economy and uh, class, the working class, and also social movements. So I've been working, my main research was in Sheffield, and I was very excited to leave. Uh, I've been living in Sheffield for one year. I've been working in two steel factories, actually for nearly two years. And I was very interested in looking at the impact of the industrialization and the kind of touch measures on the lives of people, including there was a big community, Pakistani community there as well. Right. And then I did a similar study in Brazil in a big, biggest steel complex in Latin America and I looked at similar things. I don't know if it's quite as glamorous as some of those places, but we're here in sort of Pendle, um, specifically in Briarfield. Um, so my name's Paul um, Hartley. I'm a founding director of InSitu, which is um, it's kind of an organisation that kind of started around a table. Um, we'd all worked together in the past and worked within the contexts of where, where we live and particularly around regeneration stuff, economic stuff and the role that artists play within all that, but often funded for a period of time where you, you just get going and then that funding stops and, and then there's that sense of frustration. So we felt like we wanted to take kind of a bit more control over what we what we wanted to do in terms of who we wanted to work with and, and try and think about something more long term and to be much more embedded in a community. And that notion of kind of wanting to, to work where you live um, became really important. I, I mean, I'd always worked in lots of other places across Lancashire and always kept home, home, you know, that work very separately. And I was soon realising that it just doesn't work like that, you know, that kind of connection is, is so important. Um, and it became, it, it just became a real good starting point to to create what in situ has become in one place. What's interesting about in situ is that it seems to be working as a grassroots art organisation that has this agenda of liaising with the local youth. That's very new, I think, is very powerful. We get a lot of young people who keep this library open and use it, they take books out, but really want to, to do more. So we, we try to develop a programme with them that, uh, that looked at music making, uh, that looked at fashion stuff, anything that we're interested in, a bit of filmmaking, a bit of animation, just to bring the notion of what art could be before we then we even started to push them in other directions as well, you know, to try and be a bit more challenging around that is. But yeah, but working with that, that sort of age group. In Sheffield, there was this uh, natural opposition to art from the working class community. And what is the relationship here between, you know, this working class tradition and, and, and you coming in as a, an art organisation? You can have real mixed conversations with people. I mean, on, on one level, there is a thing that, you know, art has no meaning to them, no interest. Uh, but often when you when you unpick that, it's about, well, I don't go to the opera or I don't go to the gallery or anything like that. But when you, when, when you talk to people more, you find that they, they're often... And I don't know if that's got a connection to a kind of a Lancashire history of making, of craft, of, 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 of kind of invention, that often, you know, people are doing things in their own home which you could class as being creative. But when, when you put it into a context of art, it suddenly shifts the discussion to something they don't think they understand, you know. And I think that notion of what we do on an everyday basis tries to kind of find some place within the middle of all that that it could be a bit of that, but actually you could you could you could push it down this avenue. Um, but but for us, it's kind of looking at that role that an artist can bring. That's just about looking at the world in a very different way. And I'm interested in your experiences. You talked about in Sheffield working with communities there, you mentioned the Pakistani community there, but also that kind of strength of industry in a place like Sheffield as well, and, and what your experiences have, have been around that. Sheffield was um, a very different place, of course, because um, I was looking at work, essentially, and I was looking at work that still existed. So I would go, uh, let's say, in a neighbourhood of Sheffield where there were only derelict buildings, and I would, and I entered one of these buildings. And I realized they were still working with the press hammers. Right. So I, I kind of realized that the kind of artisans were still alive, and that the industry was becoming that. It was not becoming the big industry, but this kind of sh workshop with the, you know, hidden. And so I was very interested in a way in, the, in that kind of creativity of working people, literally 
remaking, taking out, uh, um, you know, all machine from junk shops and making them working again. You yeah. know, based kind of engineering manuals that they found. Unfortunately, working as a social scientist, you don't have the, either the time or, the, or, or there were also issues of representation. You know, how you turn a long process into an image or a, or a performance or a film. So I was also working about on that. And when I finished my field work, I, I made a film that was a kind of collaborative film. So I started filming and I started working on the notion of label by using images. And so it was a, an experiment in uh, collective filmmaking, if you want. In the biggest steel plant, I did, I did work more as an activist because um, uh, I was more in contact with the trade union. So I did real activism in the sense that I tried to stop twice the closure of the company uh, in connection with MPs. Um, I also explored the possibility of buyout from a workers' buyout from a mining town in Wales. So I took the workers there. And they were, so I did a series of, uh, and I managed to keep it open for a while, but then the big steel plant closed down. So I did more activism kind of type of activity there. The older I get and the more I, I develop experience, the more I've kind of realised that the work that I do ultimately is political in some form because of what you're looking at and what you're exploring, whether it be, you know, stuff with young people around joblessness or, you know, what's described as antisocial behaviour and why they might do that and then trying to find a solution to that. It's actually you creating a voice, a political voice or an active voice that, that challenges it. And that interesting history we have within Pendle around socialism and the beginnings of the Independent Labour Party and trying to create a better life for people working in those sort of, you know, mill sort of uh, areas or, or difficult working areas. It's kind of something that feels so much more important now today that I'm kind of really enjoying uh, the challenge of understanding it in today's day's world and, and projects like this and the projects, with, you know, with Suzanne and the projects we'd be doing with In Situ have become more and more around that unlocking a voice or challenging a system or whether it's about a library potentially closing or, you know, whether a mill is developed for lots of other people to come to but not necessarily, you know, connecting back to the town that exists because of that mill. These are all things that are very about activism, about being political and, and the work that's inspired us, you know, from Suzanne stuff in the past to you know, Rick Law at Project Row Houses and the role that arts play within that context, I think, has really fired up what we do here and to create something that's much more of a niche that I think helps us connect to the people that live here. And if we can revive that passion that there was then for a group of people to be the conscientious objectors at World War One, to be the ones that were, 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 were suffragists, you know, where's that all gone, you know, now? How do we bring that back? in a way that makes sense to this town. In a way that may represent this, this, this project that could be, you know, addressed to people coming from different classes and yeah, from yeah. different backgrounds, but at the same time, through in situ, for instance, could become also a place where it, that, that kind of regeneration project is contested. So yeah. I was wondering if you also thought about how broader issue regeneration and, you know, future of the economy could be addressed to your presence in the mill. We've developed quite an interesting relationship with the, you know, the developers that are, are working on it. And as developers, they they don't want something that's going to fail on the hands, you know. But I think that natural thing to always think about creating a destination for people outside often overrides what is going on on the on the doorstep, really, and the potential for people that live here to really be inspired by it, to to contribute to it in a way that will help grow the development and their own lives. So talking about the idea of, of the mill and where this project with Suzanne has kind of uh, is starting to develop and evolve, it's kind of bringing in all sorts of kind of different dynamics and complexities within where we're working. So the idea of working class is one of it, that history of, of the mill and, and, and the mill as a symbol for industrial revolution and, and communities coming in, both local people working there and then Pakistani communities coming in is how we sort of reflect that against current challenges and issues because that mill no longer is, is working, it's, you know, it's been in decline but it's now being turned into something else. He's throwing up all these kind of interesting conversations about 
what it was like to work there, what it was like to work with people from a different country and, and then for them to have an experience coming to a new country. And the role that things like their cultures, whether it be with the Sufi community within Pakistan and how they use things like chanting within a form, um, and then things like um, the way singing can bring people together through something called shape notes, uh, but also things like mill songs that kind of give a voice to things that are going on. These are throwing up all kind of interesting kind of discussions and complexities about how we manifest a project that allows a conversation to happen and results in something exciting happening in the mill. One of the obvious problems in art, let's say, is, is representation, right? In how do you represent a, a political process and, yeah. and um, as opposed to prefiguration or prefigurative politics, so, you know, things that happen and you just convey them. So I guess one of the things that I encountered with the film was uh, that I had to make a film, I had to create a narrative that actually necessarily came out as a nostalgic narrative because it was history of a loss. And there is a lot of discussion about filmmaking, film and label. I mean, Farouki, a visual artist, look at that. And there were lots of discussion. Godard, look at that. I mean, there is a lot of discussion. Why do you film label? Do you film because you want the audience to empathize with it? And then f what do you do from the perspective of, uh, of the manager that wants you know, to sell label or from the perspective of a worker who wants to stay in label. But I think that <clears throat> the problem was still that I had to become the three person because I was a, a social scientist, I had to be there and actually not so much an activist. Um, not only for this kind of naive idea that as a social scientist you should you know, be neutral, but more because uh, there is an ethical issue how much you can be involved in processes that then you leave. But there was also the issue of um, yeah, the issue that I was also an activist, uh, but I didn't, you know, I didn't do activism uh, as a performance, you know, performatively. In terms of this project where you're bringing in a kind of um, an art aesthetic to it, so there's, there's these two forms of, um, of vocalisation as, as, as we sort of try and describe it, because even using the word singing, for some, say, within the Muslim community, you know, is, is seen as not permissible. So we've been trying to be really careful, even with language that we use, to in terms of engaging people rather than creating barriers or pushing people away. So this kind of process of understanding um, somebody that's coming, a Muslim that's coming from their their belief as a, you know an, an Islamic belief, which within one small area or town can can kind of have very different interpretations, really. Um, and so I, it's been a real sort of, it's an interesting struggle, but it's a challenge to really understand how to talk about it openly and honestly in terms of what, what we can do creatively to, to give the project a voice, uh, to allow these conversations to happen, but bring in something that creatively draws them together. So using vocal forms, whether it be chanting as one, um, or this this um, this form called shape note singing or sacred heart singing, which... And both have got a religious kind of background or, you know, incarnations within, within that, clearly. How you kind of create something that allows as many people as possible to engage with, but being sensitive and understanding of where it meets them culturally has been, has been a, real, a real challenge to do. Um, but what it's, what it's enabled us to do is, is have much deeper conversations about that and about understanding their religion and their beliefs that, that probably I've never experienced before because it's touching on things that are for some, say, say it's another professional who works for an organisation who we're trying to engage in the project, we've had conversation that's touching much more on them as, a, as an individual, not them as a professional within it because of the cultural dimension which has been, which has been fascinating. There's been so many kind of complex things to navigate in, 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 in allowing the conversation to happen but also allowing a project that invites people in to take part, to also celebrate this community that we have as well. To me, what's really interesting about this project is the, the it is through the art, is, um, it's a space for reimagining things from a different angle, for finding new, even language, as you were saying, or non-language, because we're talking about singing, it's really nice. I mean, of course, language is always quite um, objectifying anyway, so it's really nice, This um, uh, also this space that you're creating, mm -hmm. That it's uh, 
uh, representation in a different way. Um, but also I'm, I'm thinking about the ethic of representation, which is a big issue in contemporary discussion about art and politics. Um, in fact, as you know, you know, like there are artist groups like Golf Label who just do actions that are political. And so in a way there is a critique of representation there. So I'm thinking also that when you make a film, for instance, for me, it was a, a problem to create a, a, a representation of something that was not mine, but I was making of something that had the history. So I guess um, the, the interesting thing about this project is also interrogates performance as a form of, um, uh, as, as a language that is more open, more inclusive, and empowering different forms of imagination, and I really like that. In some respects, there's no, there's no other reason why all these people would get together other than creating this kind of space that yeah. an artist, yeah. you know, Suzanne as an artist is bringing something yeah. to look at it in a different way, to encourage people to come together in a space. But the, the difference with the work is that it's not solely focused on that bit. All those little conversations that are happening to work towards to it are the bit that for me, in the way that we try and do that, are... Uh, are challenging but done in such a, a sensitive way that it's about bringing people on as equal collaborators on that and that they're, they're a part of it and, and they're on the journey as much as we are in terms of how we understand it all and that's what it feels like we're all working that out together to create this new language that will mm -hmm. manifest itself eventually in the mill. When it becomes a collaboration not necessarily brings makes a kind of qualitative jump into the aesthetic so that you can open new way of thinking. I mean, I think, uh, for instance, in this project, Sufism is a really interesting f framework to reimagine forms of solidarity, forms of community activism, even political Im imaginaries of relationship between individual and collectivity that were probably here in the history of the place. But there are aesthetic decisions that are not necessarily collaboration. So I think that is very must be very clear that there is someone who's taking a decision. And the equality of collaboration has yeah. got to be so important within it. And I think my practice in how I do that, I can only do that as genuinely as 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 possible in terms of who I'm talking to, who I'm, who I'm working with at that at that time. But I think ultimately the, we are also we are all we are putting an agenda on it in that we feel that art is the thing that can make that happen, <laughs> you know. But I guess you know, uh, NASA or Ralph, you know, they believe Sufism is that that's the thing for them to be a better human being. You know, for me, I believe art is a way to be a, a better human being, mm -hmm. for want of a better word. You know what I mean? And but what's interesting is about where those things come together, and you can only come from that mm -hmm. point of view yourself. And I think if you if you do that genuinely for yourself, you, you know with that intention that, you know, it's, it's starting from the right place.